yes, once again, folks, we are live from the home of where you wear your emotions on your sleeve, the I Love Boston Sports Store, <laughs> here in beautiful Braintree, Massachusetts, at the South Shore Plaza. Football freaks and gridiron geeks, Pats pals and Foxborough friends the world over. Your old pal Fitzy Nick Stevens alongside the Minister of Pats Propaganda, Mike Dusso, and we welcome you to the Foxborough and Friends Pre-Draft-Tacular. Great to see you again, oh, buddy. Great to see you. It's great been a while. Great to see you. I know, why don't we have our little coffee cup and just like, <laughs> hey, so how's it been going? Since we been... need a table here and uh, yeah, I know. so uh, much can... has happened in the last uh, month or so. I mean... so. So much has happened, including the fact that our friends at I Love Boston Sports got us this fancy backdrop for the show. Poker. You can see that if you go to the wide shot right over there. Oh, let's uh, go to wide right? shot. Right, the all-in one, uh, which is a, an excellent backdrop. That's the one celebrating the uh, sixth Patriots Super Bowl trophy. I don't know if you guys know this or not, but... Uh, uh, the Pats won the Super Bowl, so that does that never doesn't make me happy. No matter oh. the day, no matter the rain, like we've had the last couple of days, every time it's like, oh yeah, man, people are gonna give me it. I'm heading down to the draft this week in Nashville. People are gonna give me a mouthful of shit everywhere I go. Oh, that's right, because I root for the team that's won six Super Bowls <laughs> this century, mother truckers. I love that you're still on the Super Bowl because I was worried you were gonna be like Mr. No. Kraft, no. Gronk retired, Edelman's almost 33, Amendola had a very public breakup on Instagram. <laughs> like, no, for, no, let's just skip all that. No, Let's man, you know, I, I have no idea here. why. <laughs> yeah, sure, I mean, like, it was three weeks in and the Robert Kraft thing happened and I was like, why can't I just enjoy one Super Bowl driving? <laughs> right? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I know. But uh, I am actually, we're going to use the proceeds from today's show and all of our Foxborough and friends the rest of the year through. Mike and I, when when the season's done, we're going to open a, a uh, new Cantonese American restaurant in Weymouth called Orchids of Asia. <laughs> Two. <laughs> yep, exactly. And there's going to be a 59th. It's going to be, oh, that's the Patriots calling saying, hey, Fitz, you'll never work for us again. <laughs> yeah, there's a good Robert Kraft. Oh, Nick, this is. I can't do that. Uh, you can't. Can, you uh, don't don't be talking about me like that. The this tape. private plane will pull up here right in the middle of the plaza. It'll just be out like, you'll never work in this town again. I think you'd be interested in a lot of stuff going yeah, on in this story. I know. A lot of, like, wow, do you have permit? What am I playing poker very, up there? Very flattering. Oh, look, I've got two aces up there. Yeah, you do. They're called Brady and Belichick. <laughs> Look, a lot, yeah, the Pats, okay, so since we last met up, free agency. Since our last episode. Since the last episode, since our last episode of Fox Brew and Friends, um, when we last left Mike and Fitz. Yeah. So, all right, so free agency happens, Pats yeah. miss out on a couple of guys yeah. uncharacteristically, and regularly the cupboard gets raided. Yep. We got, we yeah. got uh, you can all eat a bag Oosh. of compensatory picks because the Pats are loaded up for this week with 12. Love that oh, number. Love it. Um... The Gronk retires suddenly on a Sunday night, no I less. Know. What were I you know. doing? I'm getting ready to go to a dinner party at the neighbors, right? I'm making sure, like, I got. I had to make literally. I was doing the most unpatriots, unfitsy thing in the world. Was I like murdering a couple of beers, <laughs> making drinking? sure the kids? Yeah, no, <laughs> I was not I, drinking. I was, I was. A, I was not drinking. B, there was no sports on in the house. And I'm making a salad to go to a dinner party because somebody go. literally said like you were asking was a, for it. I think you were. Asking I think for so. It. I apologize to all Patriots fans. <laughs> it's the old pal Fitz's fault because I was making a salad yeah. on a Sunday night, not just I like know. enjoying some Pat's <sighs> highlights or something. And I felt like he was coming back. Like I like he just, well, I was just as, like, we got said last show. Like he's been around the stadium. He's working out. And you're like I don't know. Maybe he's gonna get healthy and he's gonna have. In a, in a, How about the after they win the Super Bowl, yeah. Brady's Instagram. Yeah, I know. We're gonna play forever. Remember that too? Remember yeah. that thing? I mean, I, like, and the problem, like, my little thing is, like, yeah, they missed out on some guys. I mean, certainly would have liked to have that salary flexibility. Mm -hmm. But, like, I really would have liked to have kept Dwayne Allen. I know there are guys out there, like, you, you missed out on a little bit. But just to retain Dwayne Allen, Dwayne Allen I feel like. Are we, that, are we that desperate you, already? We're know, already now I, sad that we lost Dwayne that, Allen? Like, just base level guy. And they don't even have that now. And, I mean, we can, uh, you know, talk about they, uh, we got, we got. Austin Safarian Jenkins here, you know, uh, remember him from this this moment that uh, showing on screen right now. Uh, hey, I thought the ASJ was a okay. That was. I a, mean, it's just, it, it made it's too a, much you gotta sense. Gotta do it. You gotta do it because they were in on Jared Cook, but yeah. then he took yeah. the bigger See, paycheck. He's to go. just like he's bleh. older too. Yeah, this guy. The, the, yeah. This guy's got this. This guy's got Austin Safarian Jenkins, who looked great against the Pats. So obviously Belichick got a look at him a while ago, and and yes, he had the the famous fumble where he got stripped, and the Pats knew the rule, and he didn't. But he's got a high ceiling. 
Um, he's got a fun. He's got a fun he's name that we size. can all mutilate. I know you got to type that one. For a while. Yeah. Just when I got rid of Huhu Oh Oh Manawa. Oh Manawa Nui, exactly. Got more hyphens and. Uh, but he's he's got a high ceiling. The guy can be a quality football player. Scored against the Pats in the last two seasons. So again, Pats love that. And on top of it all, he took a really low salary deal. He took a, yeah. I think in the absence of Gronk, I can step in and be a big player for them. And then I'll go somewhere else yeah. next year and I'll get four for 30. We've seen it a hundred times. Literally. And, and he's still a young Every guy. Season. I mean, he's like 26, 26, 26 years old. Uh, you know, he's kicked around and a little bit. That's a, a red flag. You know, like guys are, you know, they let him go. But um, he was a guy I like coming out. He fits the part. Um, you know, it was just a move that they had to make because it's like, who who else do you, right. do you have? Uh, you know, they signed the guy from Denver, Matt Lacoste. Lacoste. And all the jokes went around immediately like, yeah, well, we know why well, Belichick's like, hey, because Lacoste. <laughs> and <then they> lose. <laughs> I came up with it myself. <laughs> Great. Yeah. I and know. then we lose Hogan. So yeah. we lose that bit of Lacoste. I know. Well, that was a little weird. That was a weird, like. You know, I, I mean, now it's like it's Dorsett and Edelman, and uh, you know, yeah. and, and, on, and, uh, and 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 we've and added. To, uh, that's right, and here he is, former nemesis of Patriot Nation. Nemesis, though, I mean, like occasionally, he, ne like, he never actually like really. It was like, Manny Sanders is the one that got away yeah. and then went on to burn yeah. with big catches like in the AFC Championship I just against felt Butler. That he was soft, you know, I felt like it was like Demarius, we'll yeah. just stick Logan Ryan on him, and uh, you know, he'll shut him right down. Um, you know, he just never came out in the. Big well, let's game, think so about I, this though. But there, again, you need but, it. There is the whole like every wide like I, I think eventually they want to get every wide receiver that ever played under <laughs> under pain. McDaniels at, <laughs> yeah. at one point or another, yeah. right? Yeah. And because Amendola yeah. came in after he coached him out, right? In right. Well, St. Louis. And it makes sense. I mean, he's at least that like baseline level X receiver kind of guy. I mean, he's better than Dorsett, but again, coming off of a torn Achilles, right? You don't know what you're going to get. I think out his of him. twelve catches, add. his his 2013 fantasy numbers, like. The 12 catch, mm, they were crazy 156, that, yeah. two yeah. touchdowns. Oh, those, those days, those days are, are long do, behind. Do, do, do. Oh. <laughs> Does he even make the team? I, I mean, I you don't know. I mean, it, it's almost like he might be best off being on the PUP list and mm -hmm. letting him, you know, just kind of ease. Who calls it the PUP the list, pup, by the, the way? Pup just call it the PUP. Uh, pup, the PUP. On the, the PUP. PUP. He's physically unable to perform. <laughs> uh, you know, but it's the same industry, right. industry in, injury <laughs> Isaiah Wynn is coming off of. Right. You know, and granted, that he happened did his in August. in August, right? So this is later. So it's, but again, it's, it's he's, he's right in the Josh Gordon boat of, I don't know, what are we getting from him in September? I don't know. I mean, right now, uh, the only thing you really know on offense is Every that, time I see somebody yeah, tag me or just put up a post like, bring back Flash, free Flash. Every time I see that on like Twitter or the IG, yeah. uh, that's the Instagram Everybody, uh, I why do you call it IG? Yeah, why, why I even called it DIG? It's, IG. Ig. it's yeah, Ig, it's Ig. Yeah, everyone's calling it Ig, Nick. <laughs> I mean, yeah, like for God's sakes, like I called it the IG. I was making a salad when Gronk retired, mm. and now I'm calling it the IG. Oh, do they have that on the Netflix? <laughs> do you call it an ATM machine ever? Is I have a friend of that really annoys that if you call it the ATM well, machine, I gotta absolutely. go to the ATM machine. No, it's the well, ATM. Don't say that. It's machine twice. Machine it's is in there. Redundant. Like I'm gonna get a pit, I'm gonna get a panini sandwich. No, panini <laughs> is Italian for press sandwich. You dummy. That's a good, Once that's again, a it's, fine, it's fine. Panini is Italian for press sandwich. You dummy. Uh, Fox, thanks for joining us here. Fox Brown Friends live from I Love Boston Sports. Wear your emotions yeah. on your sleeve here at the South Shore Plaza in Braintree. A lot of you have joined us. Thanks for the awesome viewership already. We have a ton of questions and comments. People Holy checking God. in all across the great U.S. of A. Uh, we're That's gonna great. get to all your draft questions in just a couple minutes. Um, yeah, I, I like some of the signings they've made recently. I do. Uh, I like that Michael Bennett trade, which they made right before we did our last episode. Uh, again, I thought that was great. Trey Flowers protection gives you yeah, probably yeah. eighty percent of his buck for only sixty sixty percent of what he ended up. Not, only I'm sorry, yeah. forty percent of 80%. what he ended up costing in Detroit. Yeah, I hated Amendola going out to Detroit, but I never thought he was really gonna come back in the first place. Uh, word was this Mo Harris kid, Maurice Harris, who can be a bit soft but has killer hands, was somebody the Pats actually tried to trade for last season but mm -hmm. weren't able to pry away from Washington. Yeah. So now they've got one of their sneaky guys. They let Humphreys get like away, him. and they offered him more money, but uh, uh, gee whiz, aw shucks, O'Reilly decided that he was a man of his word and had to yeah. go down to Tennessee know. where they, he'd, he'd done it's problems they played. Stupid. It's cool. like, do you ever think about Friggin lying once right. in a while? How about just do it? This is America. That's not <laughs> Sorry, what that's got That's a little Game ahead. of Thrones. I got a little Game of Thrones there a little while. You know, I know. Little Tyrion Lannister. You know, By the way, this is not the best talk show this week. Uh, the best talk show this week was when they all sat around the fire oh. in Sunday night's episode. I don't, I don't want this I, to devolve. But I can't. I mean, I'm uh, so that, ready for the battle of winter. I, I have such a throner. 
<laughs> I have such a Game of Thrones boner right now I for the Battle too. of Winterfell. Me it is going to be, apparently, it is the longest battle sequence in the history of television it's just and movies. The slow burn building up to it, and you know, like, all those characters are going to die. We're doing a little aside here. I wish we had, like, a Chiron of, like, Game of Thrones moment. We did a Star Wars show I, last yeah, year. We, did. we talked about uh -huh. about Last Jedi, uh, but very oh, quickly, uh, everyone's just emotional. Die. You know, Brienne getting knighted. Uh, you know, and, and I mean, and, and Arya, oh. you know, you go, girl, get it, get it, go and get then, it. What's his name? <laughs> what's the, what's the redhead Tormund? Tor oh Tormund, oh my god, talking I mean, about the fact the reason why he's so big and strong is because he drank, <laughs> drank milk from a giant teeth for oh. three months. All right, it's April. We can we can talk. That about must it. be how <laughs> Gronk got. To, Gronk has always been the un, the shaven Tormund of the Patriots. <laughs> the shaven so, which means we're gonna. Well, he's gone Sunday, I guarantee. But man, is yeah. he gonna die? Oh, he's gonna. Oh yeah. And the worst part is, this is like. Like all the people that eat it Sunday night in the Battle of Winterfell, eventually, like, can turn right around and fight you five oh, minutes right. later. I know. Well, see, that was one thing I would just say, like, you know, most like silver lining. I felt like Tyrion should have been like, hey, at least if we all die, we're all going to go kill Cersei and her army right. next. You exactly. know, like, at least that'll be how we. we Someone's going to have to say that Sunday night, right? <laughs> you know? It's, uh, I don't what know. a week. Look no, at this, people. Sorry. Look where you are right now, okay? We're in, a, we're, in a, we're, in a, we're in a Boston merch store at a mall. You, you're wherever you are. Look what's going on. There's a Sox doubleheader going on today. Game seven for the Bruins tonight. The Patriots have 12 picks in the draft starting Thursday. At least seven of them are going to be traded to Andy Reid, the <laughs> Eagles, or the Lions. Uh, definitely going to trade out of the first round Thursday. We'll get into the draft stuff in just a minute and get all your questions. And then Sunday night, the Battle of Winterfell. Is this a time to be alive? Oh, and Tom Brady's back to practice, and he shook confetti oh, out of his helmet nice in the greatest seven-second nice humble moment. brag in the history oh, that, of social media. Is that confetti? Oh, how'd that get in there? Oh. <laughs> oh, was, oh, wow. Is that my huge dick? Oh, wow. How'd that get in there? <laughs> I think you know. Oh, is this a, oh, wow. Here you go, kids. You want some money to get ice cream? Oh, wow. Is that a million dollars? Giselle, where'd that million dollar oh, bill come from again? It's good to be king. It's God. Good to be king, but, uh, so good. You know, I, I just, I got to say. He's in his frigging you know, gym to, saying, I see you, Kyrie. <laughs> To Meanwhile, us, I got uh, a boner over his gym because I was the nicest gym I've right? ever seen. I'm like, where is he? It looks like 24 hour fitness. That's just oh, crazy, and he's man. got that new haircut. I was just like, God damn, Tom, good. getting after it. Oh, all right. Yeah, hold on one second. <laughs> I gotta say though, like just to bring things back to where we stand right now though, is like I just I feel like this is such an important draft for the Patriots and like yep, you know okay. I know that there's like a whole I feel and like, segue to draft up. I know I know let let's talk about it because you know I feel like I'm, I'm Pat's propaganda I feel like I'm on the side of the team but I feel like there are people even like I've to been the accused side of being a homer before. Now, well, there, there are homers who like don't think you're homer enough where you're like well this is you know a serious you know year I mean they've lost a lot and you're really you know I, I think the loss of Allen and Gronk in the mm -hmm. in the and 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 Trent Brown. Right. Right. In the ground game, that's a huge impact too. Top five um, left tackle in football last season who had the best graded out postseason, especially considering that they went to all the way and won the Super Bowl, and he just pancaked everyone that came his way in SB 5-3 mm -hmm. in the ATL. Then you have Dwayne Allen, sneaky good locker room guy, and a great block and tight end. And then Gronk blocked even on games when he mm -hmm. didn't have the regronculous numbers from 11 to 14. The guy blocked his ass off yeah no, that he was did. what he said when everyone thought he was dying they're like well he's just still run block he's you know? but a half gronk <laughs> but he's I mean, not even a quarter gronk anymore that, that was the defining kind of characteristic of this team was that ground game that took the right. pressure off of brady who scored the one touchdown in the super bowl you know it's it, and so is it, the trickle down effect on the run game if that can't go and i mean you're mm -hmm. looking at edelman edelman that's all you got right now in terms of proven guys that you're like we're oh, gonna but he's the mvp yeah but last year he had four games off coming off yeah. the surgery so he was well no, he I was agree. primed to be his freshest in the postseason. I hope he has a full year because if something were to happen to Edelman, you, I mean, you're talking 2013, you're saying, you know, last year you're doing a reset, you know. I hey, don't Burkhead, get your helmet on. <laughs> I know. We need you. <laughs> Play receiver. Uh, but, you know, just the point is that I really, like, losing Gronk, that personality, losing Trey Flowers. Uh, right. Th 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 there's a Who lot everyone of just spoke so highly of, just like the character you know, guy. And he's a three-down guy, you know. And, and right. is Bennett a three-down guy? And do you even want Bennett to be a three-down guy now? Because if you do, by the time you get to January, is he going to be able to rush? You know, ideally, you want to use him. Three down guy sounds like something you'd order. For, or, three, down three down guy down. sounds like something you'd order at Orchids of Asia. <laughs> three down guy, the three down lady. I'm mean, like, uh, but you know, I just think it's such an important, important draft. <laughs> what a and, terrible and, and, person. And, and 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 they need talent at right. key positions at t at tight end, at wide receiver, and you know, I think you always throw defensive end and and, and defensive tackle in there because they're always important. I was just trying to remember, just sidebar real quick, since I cracked myself up with that inappropriate joke. 
joke. What was the inappropriate joke I made in our last Facebook Live <laughs> that made you laugh so much? It was when I said, with his, with his new look, Antonio Brown looks like Provincetown Blade. <laughs> yes. Oh, no, that's great. I and think- he's had a hell of a run, too. He's come out looking like roses. Just- oh, geez. I, oh, the Pats were in on Antonio Brown. How come we can't get guys like that? He seems like a real high character, high quality guy, just who the Patriots would love to have in a locker room that loses people like Trent Brown, who writes a teary on camera oh, yeah. note to Dante Scarnecchia and <laughs> Pats baby. fans after yeah. he goes away to the Raiders. Losing guys like Trey Flowers, who's consistently in the conversation for man of the year. Losing Gronk, who is a, a generational talent and a hero to Patriots Nation the worldwide. Let's bring in Antonio Brown to just blow, <laughs> blow everything it up. up. Right? Jesus. <laughs> he needs more balls. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, they're, they're just our, they're our needs. And I don't want to, you know, like people are like, I, I feel like some people will get mad at you if you're not in the mode now of just like, I don't know, Belichick and Brady will figure it out. I don't really care. You know, like that's what like this offseason was, only wants, sometimes right? what's acceptable is to some ends of the, of the spectrum. You know, there's obviously the Felger, everything's terrible. And then there's the, Everything's perfect. It don't matter, you know, nope. which I don't t- entirely disagree with. But I do think there's a lot of holes to fill. Tons of holes. Tons of holes to fill. Let's fill uh, some holes. Let's fill some holes. Let's uh, let's just go to our next our new segment. Hole fillers. <laughs> <laughs> hole fill fillers. Fill those holes. Fill. Well, those. You, but... All right. So let's, okay. So wait, we got wait, a ton oh, of questions. Yeah. All right. We well, right. want to run through some questions, or you want to do we have talk a quick segment, schedule? Are right, you want to talk schedule. about this? Schedule. Ah, uh, you guys have seen the schedule. You guys we got know. The Here it is. Ready? Here, take a quick go. look Let's at it. Let's take a quick look. There it is. Right, They're ready? gonna play a bunch of teams. Week one, win. Week two, win. Week three, win. Week four, win. Week five, win. Week six, win. Week seven, win. You're doing week eight, this wrong. Week You're nine, doing win. this wrong. You've been here long enough. You know, it's like week one, squeak out a win. Week two, a loss to somebody they should never lose to. And it's gonna week be three, Miami. A bounce back win. Yeah. You know, no, that, cetera, that's the scratch. The true scratch. Etc. Etc. But okay. One game though. Give me one game that that stands out to you as far as you know. You can look here down at the schedule. Okay, a bit, I love you know. the opener. Uh, yeah, I secretly wanted the Browns because I thought that would have been kind of like pu- pushing for like a new narrative and trying to make a new star on the back of the team that won the Super Bowl and the yeah. greatness of Brady. Then there was word the day before that it may have been Kansas City, and I'm like, well, we've seen that, but you know what? This is actually becoming like the best rivalry in the AFC, if not football. And we're gonna run back the best AFC championship in memory and a great game last season. Okay, I'm in. And then it turns out to be the Steelers. Momentary disappointment followed by. Oh wait a second! Those bitches have to watch us raise the six banner, and then we're like, "Game on, mofos!" Yeah, First yeah. to seven wins. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, great, love that. Back to Miami, week two in the September heat blows. Yeah, huge Lost. chunks. Loss. I mean, that's what's inter- and most the interesting Flores to me. And coach. Oh, definitely. Yeah, I mean, that's what's most interesting to me uh, about the, the schedule. I'll take is, it. Is is three of the first four games in the in the division, and yep. so you know we talk about the Patriots a lot of uncertainty. New guys are going to be coming in. You don't even know if you're you're not you know Gordon and mm-hmm. Thomas. Those guys are question marks for September regardless. So, you know, if the right. Patriots are ever going to lose the division, it's got to start, you know, with well, those well, teams well, winning. Well, I mean, that's well, what I'm saying. Well, if you're in that perspective, right. that that's, those are the games that, you know, those are, those are big, you know, you can brush off a loss to the Lions in September. Like, right. that's not going to matter. Uh, uh, but We weren't know. brushing off much last season when the Pats, no, no. after well, that so. loss to the Lions, that was, no, you that was rough. You can't brush anything off here, but, no. you know. Well, we're Pats fans. This is what we do. We but overact those are serious games. <laughs> those are serious <laughs> games. Uh, you know, I don't know if you know, Mike, but every one of these games counts. <laughs> they all count towards something at the end of the season. We just um, put them on the roster. Any other one? Um, see me? Yeah, I love know. the Browns one in yeah. Week Eight. Then they go, and I love going on a Sunday nighter to Baltimore. A game I think they Big can one. win. There'll yeah. be a lot of hype. Like, on oh, the, road, the Ravens. Houston, this is where Lamar Nationals. Jackson can show yeah. up the Pats. Like, yeah. you go in there, you run it down their throat, you go into the bye, like six and three. They set up some chances for Seven like Ravens, Texans, right. national TV, big right. hype games. You know, heart of the season. Those yep. are, those will be interesting. And the back to back. Uh, the back-to-back AFC Easters to finish off the season in December with a flex Hopefully play, maybe with a Saturday game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they could yeah, mean yeah. nothing, which means we all could do our Christmas shopping, or they turn yeah. into the white noise in the background on the television. You never know. And there we go. Uh, but let's talk. To you. I think I got yeah. early prediction. Since I since I'm gonna I'm gonna like this team more. I'm gonna go thirteen and three. Thirteen and three. I'm gonna like this team more. Look, they lost. I hated the fact that they lost Cordero, Corduroy Peterman. I hated him going out to Chicago. I think he did way more for the team Stick? last I season mean, than underrated. other people realize. Kick off return return touchdowns. Kickoff returner. Best returner in the league last season. Yeah. And some great touchdown catches like that dime he caught from Brady in yeah. December Kick in the Miami him. Miracle game. Playing running back half the uh, season. And also, yeah, for two two games, he was the best runner. The only running back on the you team. Know. I mean, it's... So, yes, the losses have been significant. However, quick reminder, free agency has passed. They did okay. Not great, but they did just good enough. It was very Patriots in the end. 
Now we've got the 2018 draft class basically coming in as our first overall it's pick. Big. It's big. From Christian Sam to Braxton, Braxton Berrios. Yep. A lot of these yep. guys will step in. Juwan we'll Bentley coming back. He it's only played two one. and a half games yeah, last year. Yeah, and he was good. And now we've got 12 picks to fill them holes starting Thursday night in Nashville, yep. where uh, I will be starting tomorrow night through Friday or Saturday morning. It'll probably all blend together. So we got a ton of stuff coming up. Plug all the shows at the end. All courtesy uh, to the great sponsorship of I Love Boston Sports.com. So, here we go. Let's start talk filling some, some holes. Let's talk. Well, like, we put Let's together. Some, oh, you want to get questions? Let's take some questions fire. first. All right, here we go. Fire. Let's hear it. All right, here we go. Right here. We'll take our first question right off the top. Scott Bellotta says, Fitzy, guys, make a bold prediction on what Bill will do in the first round. Also, you guys need your own TV show. I on couldn't. TV. I couldn't. You are the smartest man on the internet, <laughs> Scotty B. Scotty Balada. We're available. I need. A, I need Balada more from you, my man. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, bold prediction. Okay, you go first. I got mine. You go first. Sure. Well, I mean, I think there's a lot of ways they could go because there's a lot of needs, and I would totally advocate trading up to get you know some of that talent. You sure. know, and and you talk about guys like I mean, I don't think Hokinson. It's going to be available. I think Hawk. he's out of the Hawkinson. Hawkinson. Hawk, 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 Hawkinson. Sorry, Hawkinson. The um, Hawk. And it would have been great. The, the, the transition from the Gronk to the Honk, the Hawk, uh, yeah, it's perfect, would have been amazing. You know? and then th- it's and not going to happen. To think they got Gronk in the second round, and, you know, that's now. Well, that ruined like, everything because the second anyone sees somebody anybody. with anything resembling Gronkishness yeah. about him, yeah. the second someone like a Schefter or a McShay or Mel Kuyper, when they spray paint his head on and he comes out of the basement at ESPN, Whenever yeah. they say, like, I could see like a young Gronk out of this guy. Gone. Yeah. Never, yeah. He'll never make it to the Pats. But uh, I think the guy that's that's kind of popular, maybe could be a possible first-round option, is uh, is uh, our friend Irv Smith. I don't like call him our friend. He's not our friend. Our I guess because he's from Alabama. Uh, right. And anybody from Alabama played for Nick Saban has sure. to be a friend. Um, but, you know, the, those guys, the Noah Fants. Mm-hmm. Um, he you won't know, be there the guy, I mean, he might not be there. A, a lot of those guys um, that people like, uh, at least at the tight end position. But I could mm-hmm. see tight end position. I could see wide receiver position. And, and I think probably what the most likely might be uh, would be, you know, defensive end, defensive tackle. Because those are the big matchups people you got to get early all right so i thought you were going to say good lord there's so many questions at this point now i can't even keep up with them um i all right i'll say this i thought you were going to say they trade out of the first round no uh, no i don't think i they can will. I, I can definitely see that i can definitely see if there's not somebody that they truly believe has first round first round talent is like one of their grade a yeah. top 10 players i could totally see the pats trading out of the first round um phil perry from nbc sports boston does great mocks the next pats podcast he actually has them trading down to 43 with detroit so detroit can swoop in and get whatever the hell they want uh a chance to finish third in the nfc north (laughs) um and they have the safety from florida chauncey gardner jones chauncey gardner phillips yeah something like that safety's Um, a good position and i think it's a great call uh if they do that because they pick up a set he's got them picking up a second next year which is great value for 2020 and they get Basically, even though Chung just signed a new three-year deal, they get another one of these hybrid tank, could possibly play in the box, but good in tight end coverage kind yeah. of safeties, which is how the league is trending mm-hmm. as the linebackers and safeties kind of merge. Yeah. And the Telvin Smith mold I mean, kind and, of counter Neal becomes the thing. Yeah. That's a great call. I'm telling you right now, here's my first round prediction, and then I'm going to fly in with my, my scorching hot draft take. I don't know what it is, but Number it's Number one, <laughs> they're taking an offensive lineman. Yeah. They're going to take an offensive lineman at 32, and we're going to wait all night, and there's going to be at least three players you've seen on everyone's mock, from Charles Robinson to Bucky Brooks. Uh, Uh, Like Jerry Tillery. Yeah, Jerry uh, Tillery. Throw him up there. He's a great, I mean, he's a great fit. This is middle initial R, because we can call him (laughs) Tillery. Come on, get Tillery. (laughs) Or maybe like Dexter, uh, was it Dexter Lawrence, the defensive lineman from Clemson, Mm -hmm. he could be available. Mm -hmm. And I'm guaranteeing you, one of these tight ends is going to be available, too. And maybe even a receiver that people have mocked to the Pats time and again, uh, oh, uh, like a Debo Samuel. Love him. He's another uh, one. I got. We got a video. The kid from Mississippi. Isn't there a kid from Ole Miss like Maurice Brown or something like that, or AJ Brown or AJ yeah, yeah, Maurice, right. mm-hmm. AJ Slater, okay. yeah. Zach Slater. I don't know. <laughs> Zach Morris. Is, if Zach Morris is available, you got to take. Make up I'd names. go Zach Morris over Kelly Kapowski personally, <laughs> just because for entertainment value alone. Um, so I think they're going to go offensive lineman, and they're going to think one of two things. It's either going to be like, well, Marcus Cannon's kind of getting up there. We're not sure. We'd love to have a dependable swing tackle. And plus, the other left yeah. tackle's coming yeah. off Achilles surgery. Yeah. Belichick wants to win a, a trench war now. Yeah. Brady's getting up there, blah, blah, blah. 
Or it could be a guard because he's going to say, you know what, I just paid Shaq. I don't know if I can afford to give $12 million a year to Tooney after next season. Yeah. So he's going to draft a swing guard, give himself interior protection, play him as a possible extra tight end type, just go all ground and pound next season. Pats fans will be like, oh, man, I waited all night long, and Belichick takes like this tackle from east-west, yeah. never friggin' heard of it, state, yeah. or yeah. south, south united butthole state. Yeah. <laughs> It's probably going to happen, so get prepared for it. There's not going to be a sexy first-round pick. Rarely is there ever one. No, I, I think tackle is a big need, and uh, you know, I mean, they, they lost Waddle as well. So mm-hmm. I mean, you're talking too, you know, oh, you need a swing guy. Was, yeah, a friend you had of the to show. bring that up. You had to look pick at the Lascars. <laughs> oh, friend of, a friend of the La show. Uh, you know, so I, I I wouldn't be surprised. You know, it's like there's just, and that's why I'm like trading down and doing the same old thing. It's like. They need. I mean, I, I've never wanted to be like, don't waste mm-hmm. Brady's prime. But you got maybe two, three years left tops. Like you need some serious mm-hmm. guys, you know, and and you know, filling it out with a bunch of C players or you know, right. like, hey, we added six second, you know, third round guys, and you know, yeah. I don't know. You just they're all about the strong middle class, but 2012, 2006, you know, those years tr- trading up multiple first round right. selections to have guys who can step in and play immediately because. Ha- that's How many first round wide receivers have the Pats ever taken? I mean, I, uh, same number of TV shows. The two of us are both involved in right none? now. Zero. That's right. And, and, Zero. And what do they got in the pipeline? And the second you know? rounders are usually a bust if they're not if they're not named Dion Branch. So that's probably not going to happen as well. I can totally see him going big and beefy right there. Yeah. Uh, before I get to the scorching hot draft yeah. take, uh, here we go. Good right question. here. Uh, here we go. Patricia Stella Marie Murphy. Uh, good, and that's someone else. Yeah. The Austin Safarian Jenkins. <laughs> another three-namer here. Oh, oh you're a top fan, too. Thank you, Patricia. <laughs> Patty, I love you. She says, how about Will Greer? Oh. I've got a bet riding on it. Are the rumors true? Uh, Anthony Petrillo says, are the ru- Will Greer rumors true? I don't uh, know. I feel like this. Uh, we don't know. We have, no, we have, we have a have, couple sources, but they're not like reliable enough to give you like definitive stuff yeah. in the middle of a Tuesday, po- Tuesday yeah. Facebook Live. But... There's something that tells me the second this leaks out two days before a draft Man, that it's 100% I, smoke. Like Evan Lazar know. last night on Twitter was like, oh, this is 100% smoke screen. Oh. Th- come on. How many times have we done it's this? It's the oldest trick in the book of like, well, the Patriots are interested in player X, so right. other teams better be interested and agents start, being, start stepping up to pay them. Is it a favor to an agent? Or, or? You know, it's, it's all, all the team has to do is rumor that the Patriots are interested in every, and 31 teams' radars go up. So, I mean, there's no denying Will Greer is a, is a really good fit for, kinda, you know, kind of that. Like, he's kind of one of my sneaky draft crushes. Yeah, sure. I know we're not doing draft crushes yet, but at the same time, like, he's not my number one draft crush, but you draft a quarterback in the first round. Doug Kide from Nesson pointed this out. It does make some sense in case there isn't the O-lineman or the D guy that they love, because mm-hmm. if you take him in the first, you get the fifth year option. Sure. So let's say Brady plays three more seasons. You make this kid say Garoppolo two style. Two years on a, on a rookie contract still. And that's why you're crazy. in the sweet spot right yeah. now. Yeah, crazy thing is though, I think he's ready to play. I yeah, think this guy. Yeah. I think this guy needs like a season on the bench. Will like Will Greer's clutch throws last season. Watch his hype tape. Walk, go back and YouTube up some Will Greer highlights. Oh. This kid makes some throws. Watch his lowlights though, and you won't be that impressed with him. <laughs> they just we picked out all his terrible plays. Yeah. And you watch it. You're not really that impressed with. You know, he just looks. He's shitty. okay. He just looks shitty. No, I'm just kidding. No, because <laughs> like, no, like, everyone's like yeah, Daniel Jones. Film. Why wow. is this guy? Yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah, who's ever put out a lowlights? <laughs> like how and now here's the lowlights <laughs> from T.J. Hawkins. This guy sucks. This guy sucks. missed this block. <laughs> Devin Bush. This guy could have had 20 sacks. <laughs> Ah, yeah, I know. Everyone gets so hyped on the hype. Like, well, it's a hype reel. What's it supposed to do? Get your hype again. I, uh, I think it'd be great, but just like I don't see them. That's the only reason why I could see them grabbing a guy. Unless this would be the first time the whole like rumors are the Pats have first round interest or they're hype on this guy, yeah. and then all of a sudden it actually that? happens. No I one mean, had them picking. Dominic Easley is the only one that like everybody knew they were picking for some reason, and like you know <laughs> there's still lots of victory last year taken. Like we all got. And like had dogs that attacked people. We were Belichick all wrong secretly together. hated him. We were all wrong together. You yeah. Know? But his highlight film looked great. Comfort in numbers. Yeah. Exactly. Because sure. we were all sure. wrong we together. We all knew it. I know. Uh, uh, see who else real quick. Um, 
Uh, yeah, okay. But I would love Will Greer. If he's in the second and they grab him with, what do they have, two or three second round oh picks Oh my right God, now? I've lost track. Two. I think I they got like 43, two, 56. Two in, two in the second, two in the third, I think. I think maybe three in the third, yeah. I think they have six in the top 100. <laughs> Who keeps track of it? This is amazing. Uh, there's a, a, <laughs> the answer, a lot of people. There are a lot of human beings oh, who get paid good money well, to keep track like, of this stuff. It's like going in, though, and I tweeted, oh, this is exciting. They've got 12, 12 Pats picks coming up this weekend. People are like, oh, they're probably not going to select all of them. I know. I know, but I'm just the point is that 12 picks of capital to move up and down. I mean, that's what they've got the ability to do. They don't need all that. They don't need 12. No. What are they legit? What are they, they still probably pick need? nine guys because that's usually like they a need sweet seven spot guys for them. But they need seven, and they need like a tight end and a wide receiver who can play, and, yep. and maybe even a defensive end or defensive tackle that can play yep. immediately. Um, and the, the, you know, those positions don't really have a, a 2018 rookie or or a, a significant free agency addition. All right, I got them needing eight guys. I was, I'd say about eight guys. But you, all right, you said yeah. needing oh, needing a tight end that can play. All right, I'm gonna do it. Here it comes. Uh, Fitzy's is this your hot take? Scorching hot. <laughs> Fitzy's scorching hot 2019 NFL draft take Patriots edition is. The New England Patriots. I feel like you need to do it. Yeah, I'll this do it. Camera. All right, here we go. Ready? My scorching hot draft take 2019. The New England Patriots will not draft a tight end in the first three rounds. You are going to see them pass by everyone from Irv Smith, the Hawk, even guys like Jay Sternberger, who I love oh, because Brady yeah. to Sternberger would turn into a Brady burger for a <laughs> touchdown, which would be the greatest, <laughs> which would just be social media gold. They're not doing it. Because why? Because Belichick, because it is the most obvious position of need post Gronk, and that's exactly why he's not going to do it, and we're all just going to have to deal with it. There, I said it. Now it's on the record. Thank you. I think this looks great. We got a nice, uh, we got a nice, you know, heart to heart camera. Yeah. So we go up there now, but uh, that's my that's my scorching not draft take. Just putting it out there right now. <laughs> they are not taking a tight end in the first three rounds. They're going to take someone you have it never heard of. I know. Well, I mean, I uh, I'm I'm blanking on the guy out of Stanford's name right now, but he's one of the guys where it's like those guys that can actually block. Uh, and so many of the prospects that we have coming out, Sternberger right. you mentioned, Fant, all those guys, they're super receivers, you know, and it's like, but it's going to take some time to block. So you wonder. Caden Smith. Caden Smith. Is there, you know, even more value to bring in a guy who's played in a little bit more of a pro style offense who can step in and, and block and be, right. you know, the third tight end role? Uh, does that make more sense than, you know, you're not going to find Gronk. You're just La not. No, it's a. It's you're not going to instantly just it's find some guy, plug him in, and just be like, hey, be Gronk 2.0. Do it. Do it. Yeah, you know, just get in there and do it. He tries to spike up touchdown. Like, not, what are you doing? Don't spike it. Yeah, That's what are you doing? Thing. Stop it. <laughs> you can't spike like Fla it. Like Flash was allowed to do it, you know, and, the, and Edel Edelman does his oh, own Gronk spike every now and again. Tributes, but tributes to, you know, only. Like, right, right. But know, that's like, not your thing. You know, Chase Sternberger coming in and catching a touchdown, and then you're like, ho, 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 ho. Just right. place the ball down nicely. Move on All here. right, your top, your top prospects, your top tight end prospects for the draft. All right, here we go. There we go, right here. We go, bada bing. Okay, the top tight ends include T.J. Hawkinson, Irv Smith, Noah Fant, Jay Sternberger. Yeah, well, we Kahale Cam Waring too. I mentioned, you know, he's another guy that's that's Waring. He's a lower round guy that they could develop, you know, and he's not right. going to step in. He's not the exciting name, but he, you know, he's one of those guys that fits the athletic profile. And you're like, well, maybe he'll blossom. They always take runners on those kind of guys. Um, but it's it's you know the, I mean if they had to make do with what they have right now it's a little scary especially when you with think ASJ, about with ASJ Lacoste and and um, and, and the, the, the walking the, injury oh my god the <laughs> Waterford the of... Waterford like literally Mr Glass oh my god uh, wait hold on now I've even forgotten his name I know Could not Cody. The other Hall, one. Jacob Hollister. Jacob Hollister. <laughs> yeah, Hollister. That's out by. That's. It's been that's, on the team three years. Between Wilburn and Lemonster, right? Hollister. <laughs> yeah, I just, I don't, I just don't see it happening. I don't yeah. know why. I just don't see it happening. Well, um, one last shout out too. Okay. We gotta mention Andy Isabella, who's a UMass guy, popular, super fast, uh, super quick guy, um, that a lot of people really love. Um, and he's another one that you know could fit. I think that's my number one draft crush, Isabella. That kid. That I mean. There's a guy I follow on Twitter. I'm not sure if you follow him as well. Casey Baker does a lot of he does some good ins, does some good insight. Mm. A lot of great uh, highlight reposts. Uh, works for Binge Sports, and he has been on this kid from like it's day about, one. Yeah. Just like uh, every every Saturday last year, he would post like a highlight from Andy Isabella and just be like, "Please, New England Patriots, draft this kid." Yeah, I mean he fits. He is everything. It. You will not shed a single further tear about them missing out on Humphreys. You will not won't worry about the dole and nothing. This kid is an animal. He's yeah. a slot machine. Oh. He will step right in 
and do everything the Patriots want. He has everything the Patriots would ever need in a receiver. And I don't feel like there are a ton of teams. I, could, I think Kansas City's in on him maybe. Maybe Green Bay as well. Could be on a couple other teams' draft boards. But that's a perfect guy at the end of the second round to snag and just say, okay, we've got the system where you're going to thrive yeah. for years to come. Sure. I Sit mean, in your college backyard you and be out. a stock I mean, it's, you know, not the biggest guy, and you, you hope that you know we can kind of get that Edelman thickened right. up. You know, you look at like Edelman now versus Edelman 2009. Uh, but they, I mean, they he need inside doubled. receivers, outside right. receivers. Like, there's right. no, they're, they're not like not like. It's, oh, we don't need that. You know, they need any receiver they can get, and mm-hmm. you know, especially guys who just bring something like Debo, who just is that ultra competitive, crazy guy. You know, those kind of guys like who bring. When Gronk came, he brought that an element. All of a sudden, the Patriots' offense changed the second Gronk put on that helmet at the draft uh, stage and started. The NFL out. changed. The NFL changed. But, you know, the Patriots, they, they needed that so badly at that point after yep. getting their asses handed them in 2009. They needed toughness. They needed that. And, and, and I feel like they're going to need it this year. And, and if they don't get it this year, this is going to be kind of a blah year on offense, you know, especially if something were to happen to Edelman. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I've said before, uh, you could, I even said it like the, the post-Gronk retirement webcast, uh, which is on the YouTube and the Townie News, that you could, in, lar- in, in large part, you could actually say, that Gronk is as responsible as any other player on the team, any other person working at page, one Patriot place for this second mini second dynasty, like the second half of the dynasty. Sure. There's a first three, a couple of tough yeah. years in between, and then basically from 2011 on, that well, they went to the AFC Championship every year. They went to five Super Bowls, won three. We're not going to talk about the other two. It's fine. <laughs> but... <clears throat> no, it's they've been, like they were they were championship yeah. relevant every season. It's because you had somebody like that who was just such a massive difference maker in the yeah. in the locker room, especially on the field, in the community, all over the place. But you can't immediately just say like someone else come be Gronk. No, I it, no, and no, no, it just doesn't happen on 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 numerous levels: blocking, catching, off right. the field, energy, all of that. Yeah, um, it's 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 not easy. But I, I mean, I would I, in that group, I would put McCordy, Chung, Hightower. Edelman, Gronk, and obviously Brady, but that that little core, that's kind of the core. They, I mean, they got you. Yeah. They, they got you. You know, they got to get some. They got to get some safeties, dude. Because sa- yeah, safeties are a need. Because like, there were rumors McCordy could hang it up after this one. He he stays. His brother resigns. Yeah, I could see Harmon being like, you know what? I got a nice life, and I've been to a bunch of Super Bowls. This is my last call as well. Yeah, I think Chung is Chung's the big one. You know, and the fact they extended him and you know gave him a little more money shows how much they value him. I mean, I he's think kinda he's awesome. the guy. Oh, I cannot, I mean, whoever the guy that makes it all work back was there. blah left and came back and was like, guess what, guys? Second time around. I know, crazy, crazy. I mean, it's it's uh, he's one of the more fascinating guys. He's awesome. but certainly, talk about guys responsible for the second dynasty for sure. All right, Joel Rodriguez, Chris Leonard, thank you guys. Many others chiming in. Two picks in the second, and they do have three in the third. Yeah, okay. so that's six picks in the top one hundred. What would you, all right? Let me see. No, a couple other questions. Yes, thank Chad you very Jackson. much. There's the annual pre-draft yeah. Facebook Live. Chad, Chad Jackson. Jackson. Hold on. Brian Webster. You want Daniel Jones? Everyone says this kid yeah. has adequate arm strength. He's got the acumen. Super smart. Worked with David Cutcliffe. So he's got the Manning family pedigree. Everyone's got him going to the Giants. I don't think that arm is Jet Life Stadium ready. But it sounds like a scouting whatever. report on one Tom Brady way back when. Yeah, but Brady had the moxie. That's why I want. That's why I the moxie the quarterback. Kid. I want the. I want. I want Greer. If anyone else, yeah. there's some other guys that would be okay. That everyone's yeah. hype on that Drew Lock kid. Yeah. Rippin, uh Brett rippon has got a cannon, but yeah, uh, goes down easy, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, we'll None see. of them are too sexy. Um, Anything else? Let's see Anybody who else we else got. Uh, hold on. Well, Ben Watson potentially. Frank the Tank wants to know. Rumors are Ben Watson may want to come back for one more season. Would you entertain that? I mean, sure. For some stop but, you gap. Know, it's like it's all these thirty stop plus. Gaps. It's like you know. I mean, I guess it makes Silver sense. Fox tight end but edition action. You know, what's he gonna do? I mean, I'd much rather be looking at a good rookie in the in the getting those snaps. But you know, I think. I mean, I think some of the only positions that would really shock me if they like spent a high high pick would be, you know, like a center. A guard. No, I mean, they, they do have long-term needs. There's always long-term needs, but, I mean, you know, a cornerback. I mean, they seem to find cornerbacks who can step in and start undrafted free agency oh, every year. What if it's a cornerback so, he takes with 32? Like, what? What the hell? You yeah, know, no. I mean, that Meanwhile, you got the, the number one-rated cornerback in football with Gilmore. you got the number one-rated rookie cornerback with J.C. Jackson. No, I know. It's like, and Duke Dawson has do? hit the field. Let's Bert- take another corner. I know. That would, be a, that would be a big, you know, and then you're like, well, is he a safety? That would be the big question. You know, they like, see him as a safety. Um, maybe. All right, so. Six picks in the top 100. Going to trade away at least one of them. I doubt it's going to be trading up to go grab somebody like 
you're not going to see the Pats just suddenly, like, if TJ Hawkinson falls to, like, 15, you're not just going to see them, like, I mean, that would be awesome. I know. Well, I mean, yeah, you could certainly make the case for it. would be awesome. It, you know, you, you can make the case for it. Um, you know, you just, you don't know what that Belichick end game is. It's like, does this just keep, we just keep rolling draft picks into, into the future. And, you know, we we're always have 12 now, picks. I know. <laughs> you know, is there a certain point where he's like, I'm kind of wrapping this thing up. Tom's wrapping it up. Maybe it's time yeah. to, you know, it, it spend a little draft capital, which, you know, I make that argument. So you could, you could, especially with the 12 picks. I'd like to see the Pats come out of the top 100 with. Uh, swing offensive lineman. I'd say go to. I'd say. I'd say probably. I'd say probably go guard first because of you. Because of the fact you'd want the Tooney insurance. But you did just lose your top backup with Waddle, so maybe and you want to go might, tackle and first. And might be an interior backup guy too. You don't know. Never know. He, he played guard, they then might played grab tackle. A tackle you yep. like and let him figure it out. It you got to get. Uh, you lost Malcolm Brown. I know they signed Pennell away from the Jets, who actually graded one. out higher. That's a good one. Uh, it was a good signing, but I'd like to see a swing offensive lineman. I'd like to see. Some D, some trench beef on the D side. Trench beef. I want to see a depend, and I want to see, yeah. I either want this kid from Buffalo, this wide receiver from Buffalo that everyone says is an is an absolute stud in the making. Just he went to Buffalo, so <laughs> no one's in on him. <laughs> uh, Andy Isabella would be the dream, and I would love to see them just get an absolute thumper. What like a trend like this Jonathan Abram kid? People yeah. have talked about maybe yeah. going to like yeah. uh, the Ravens or Detroit. That kid's a stud. Yeah, you got to take what's available. I mean, I, you know, the, the safety need is, is going to happen sooner than later. And I think that we saw when they were had their down period, you know, 2009, 2010, 2011. Right. They were really looking for safeties. And, you know, they didn't have that back end uh, kind of squared away. And I think that's part of why. They Kyle Andrews, here we go. We, uh, this is another variation of we need a deep threat. Says we need someone to stretch the field. We do not have any, no field stretches. We got yeah. some hole fillers. Yeah. We don't have any deep, we don't have yeah. You see right. him getting well, the big guy? I mean, I think that there's there's a few different ways to stretch Debo's, the field. Debo Samuel is not a field stretcher necessarily. No, but he's like one of those guys like Malcolm Mitchell, you know what I mean, who can do a right. number of things and he maybe know he's, you know, but I, mean, I think you got to stretch the field with the tight end. I mean, that's a big thing. you got no Gronk anymore who would stretch your seam for you. I mean, obviously, if Gordon or, or uh, Thomas come in, they're the outside guy, um, you know, but I don't, I, I mean, it's, it's, I think if you simplify it, if it's like, oh, they just need to stretch the field and they're never going to have a guy. I mean, I think guys like Brandon Cooks, I, I didn't like that. Mm -hmm. I didn't like him in the offense. It's like, you know exactly what he's going to do. It's either going to be a pass interference or, you know, or he did catch, you know, a few deep balls, but mm -hmm. they need guys who are multi-tool guys. And I'd rather have a Malcolm right. Mitchell type than a Brandon Cooks type. Um, who I think is, you know, shut down in the big, bigger stages. Yeah. Uh, we saw... As we just saw, uh, evidenced uh, perhaps on the biggest stage of all. <laughs> Twice. Uh, Twice. As, point, as pointed out by, wait, hold on, this is fantastic. Um, somebody just pointed out that, uh, could we swing it, uh, Frank the Tank also wants to know, could we swing a trade for A.J. Green or Julio Jones? I don't think either of those teams are big. parting ways. That'd be big. That'd I mean, be huge. I mean, but of course, yeah. <laughs> a draft day trade, yeah, we didn't even talk about any possible draft day trades. Know, the, 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 uh, are you ever going to see the Moss like, oh, know. just a fourth rounder for the it, greatest wide receiver it, of all time? It could, <laughs> it, could, I mean, it could happen. The need is there, but. Who'd be that guy? Well, someone wanted to know also, like, if the Pats are going to grab a mid-round quarterback, uh, why not get, and this guy's name is incredible. From North Dakota State University, Easton Stick. Yeah, Easton Stick. Yeah, uh, I, he's give another it. one I like. I mean, I think there's a lot of give those guys to fit. There are a lot. There are you a know, lot of developmental like passing, guys. Passing, good leader. You know, right. the, the, he just needs two years on the bench behind Brady. And you want to try to maximize what you get out of Brady in terms of <laughs> apprenticeship. You know, it's Easton Stick. Al Martin with the question. Thank you, Al. Yeah. Uh, all right, so those are my wants out of the top 100. Are yours any any different, or is there some, is there someone excitement? I mean, I you know we've mentioned a lot of the guys that I like. Um, who's, you know, your, who's, that, who's your sneaky crush? I mean, it, I've, I've I've brought him up a couple times. I mean, Debo, you know, it's like you I really like those Debo, guys. Yeah. Well, it's just like you know, guys who just bring a presence, you know, and he, he's not going to check all the boxes of, but they have those needs, and I just feel like you need to add a couple presence guys. Right. So you're worried about the presence, team. and not necessarily well, not. More about the presence than the wow factor, but still maybe a little wow because well, this yeah. team could I mean, get. You know, it's 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 just that like I mean I think I kind of feel like presence wow factor. It's kind of combined. You know what I mean? It's just that right. feeling of like wow, this guy is gonna bring something to the table instead of you know a guy like Taylor Price from you know whatever years Ohio. ago. You're like, 
random guy they took in the third right. round, and you don't really know how he fit. You know what I mean? Those, that's not a present. They took three you wide know. receivers in 2013. None of them stuck around yeah, the team. You know, I mean, Do- even Dobson was like, Dobson, like, he was a dud of a human. He was a dud. And, and so was, was Josh Boyce. And, you right. know, Boys was kind of, you know, he wouldn't eat sushi. Yeah, Boys. <laughs> it was just, I remember uh, sitting with him at the, at the opening night dinner party at the stadium that me and uh, Kippa from the Pats fans videos got invited to. Boyce was there, and we were just, and we were just like, he like he just didn't fit. Like there was no just like, oh man, this guy's like a, yeah, yeah. wow, this guy. He was just sort of like, oh wow, look, I can't believe I'm here too. Like, <laughs> I know, right? You're you are. You actually you're have. Like, a, you're you more happy to be here than I, than I am. I <laughs> am. And I'm psyched because they're serving tuna and there's Gronk. <laughs> He's like tuna. It was 2014. Yeah, yeah that was awesome. Yeah. Uh, we met Garoppolo. He had sweaty pits. He, <laughs> damn, was he handsome Dude, though? He was probably working out all what? day long in the sun, and then they're like, throw a suit on and go out there. You got to get awards and stuff. You know? I just don't. I just don't know who possibly becomes like. Who steps in and becomes like the target or the threat right now? Because it's so hard. It, it, I, I it hate is. Playing I think this the, game. I hate the, playing this game. That's why I'm so. F- three I know. months of playing this game. I'm so fascinated. But what by about this draft? This? Just what about because this? Yeah. we may actually get a much clearer vision. I don't know who that wide receiver is. They could s- snake from another team who they could come in on draft night and be like, uh, oh well, you know, I'll give you. Here's a fourth for this guy or. We, we, we got three thirds. We could have a twenty-five hour Fox and friends. <laughs> what right. about this guy? Right. What, what, I yeah. mean, who knows? But they, I, I just the thing that that the the, uh, the the truth is that they need guys. They got right. spots open, and they yeah. got a bunch of draft capital. Damn. All right. Well, hopefully, we by not necessarily figuring anything out on our own end, we're able to help you guys feel <laughs> get a greater feeling for the draft as well. Um, a little bit, just a yeah, hangout you know, sesh. It's a, a it's a hang sesh. We're ta- hang sesh. We're talking pats, yeah. getting you ready for the draft. There's a ton to come. Obviously, as we get closer and closer to the first round, Thursday night, 8 o'clock, prime time. you got NFL Network, Fox, everyone under this ESPN, everyone under this. It's on the cooking channel. It's on Lifetime. <laughs> it's on C-SPAN. It's on Amazon. It's on it's Hulu. Gonna on it's on a- social media. It's going to be on AccuWeather.com. Um, there's going to be so much more to come, so much more to learn. Um, a little bit about what's going on over the next couple of days. So if you want the latest inside information patspropaganda.com follow them on the tweet box at Pat, do it tweet box at Pat's Propaganda. uh i need a drink of water hold on one second let me just uh tom brady it because you always got to stay mega hydrated <laughs> oh look at that uh, remember that uh i will say uh, too I got, Marco i'm gonna Rubio drop moment. a mock draft my i'm gonna do one mock draft because again speculation just drives you do me to just one okay um do that wednesday and uh, yep. and top 50 draft board i put together is like the 50 favorite guys a lot of the guys we talked about here yep. on it, um, you know, just picking out the captains, the football nerds, the guys who are have freakish talent that don't quite have a position. Um, those are the guys that I'm always kind of captains drawn to. make for a big deal. Belichick loves loves four year guys and he loves captains yep. as well. Oh, captains! Um, all right, I head down to Nashville tomorrow. Uh, we'll be at the Nashville Patriots fan club opening night party tomorrow night at some fancy place I have no business going to. <laughs> Team GFY, including Title Town Fair Tire Francis from the NFL Fan Therapy Series, will be down there with me. Thursday, 4.30 Eastern, 3.30 Central Time, we're going to be doing the Team GFY Townie News NFL Draft, D-R-A-U-G-H-T. Spectacular, a little Facebook Live fun to set the scene, give you a little more insight from Jackalope Brewing, the Jackalope Brewing Den in downtown Nashville. It's about a mile away from Draftsville, from what I'm to understand, so we'll be there, hanging, banging back some pints, getting you ready. If you decide to join us, and you come up to me or Francis during the Facebook Live, and you say this secret phrase, Rutgers Navy Punter Safety. That's right, (laughs) Rutgers Navy Navy Punter punter Safety. safety. Come up to me, the first five people that say that, I'll buy your first beer. Wow. And yeah. we may even have some t-shirts for yeah. you from ILOBossesports.com. So you or your friends, anyone you know that's going to be down yeah. there, tell them to come to Jackalope Brewing. Join Fitzy's uh, yeah. NFL Draft Spectacular live at Jackalope. Rutger Navy, Rutgers Navy Safety Punter, and I'll buy you a beer. Punter Safety. Punter Safety. <laughs> Rutgers Navy Punter Safety. <laughs> Rutgers Navy Punter. Even I can't even get the damn thing right. Why do couldn't I, I just do I get like DFY or something like that? Say that too, and I'll buy you a beer. It'll be a fun one. Uh, we'll be generating tons of content from down there as well. And uh, then follow along with us during the draft, and we'll have a, a damn good time. And we'll be back in a couple weeks with our yep. draft recap. Wrap it up. Do that little mini camp preview and all that action. Yeah. Uh, so until then, at Pat's Propaganda, at Fitzy GFY. We'll see you on the other side of the draft. LFG, baby!